Tallest eagles can't fly in the sky and have great strength. Bats can't grow out of a woman's shoulders and come out of her body. Flowers can also grow teeth instantly. And it is the Academy of Good and Evil Magic, which exists in another space dimension, two men fight at the drop of a hat. Looking closely, they look the same. Soon the blue man is no match for the red man. It turns out that they are the founders of the Good and Evil Magic Academy, tasked with maintaining the balance between good and evil. But evil is no longer satisfied with what is in front of them. Evil is bent on creating a world full of evil and practicing blood magic. Evil unleashed an unprecedented attack on good, and good was immediately knocked to the ground. Slowly the two of them fought to the edge of the cliff, but did not expect to fight the two fell at the same time. At the critical moment, good grabbed the rock and climbed up, while evil fell to the bottom of the cliff. The situation is unknown. There are two geeky girls in the small town of Taro, and their fate will be changed by the Magic Academy as well. The two arrive at a bookstore, where Sophie asks if the Magic Academy exists. The store manager tells of something that happened 20 years ago, when a girl was taken away by some kind of monster at night, when the color blood filled the sky, and went who knows where never to return. She was presumably accepted into the Academy of Magic that night. Sophie was walking through the forest alone with her luggage. The sounds from all around the woods made her particularly afraid. At that moment, someone suddenly tapped her on the shoulder. Startled, she turned around and saw that it was her best friend Agatha, who knew her best. Arriving, while they were talking, there was a noise in the distance, and when they looked up, they saw the blood moon fill the sky. There seemed to be a pair of blood red eyes in the trees, and suddenly black smoke with blood red eyes swooped down at them, and the big claws grabbed Sophie and dragged her all the way. Agatha was scared, but she would never give up her friend, and she chased after her, pouncing and pulling her to a hall, and Sophie felt that this was probably the academy coming to get her, but Agatha still doesn't feel safe and urges her to go home. Suddenly a pair of giant palms appear high in the sky and grab the two, and with a scream, they were carried up into the air. Grabbing them was a giant hairless baby. In the distance, come see the spiky, tower-like castle that is the academy of good and evil, where Sophie has always fantasized about being a beautiful princess, while Agatha, with her frank, sad face, cries out for her to go home. But often things don't work out as planned. Just after flying over the academy, which symbolizes goodness, the bone eagle suddenly drops Agatha, followed by Sophie. Agatha wakes up in the meadow of a field of flowers and in front of her sons, beautifully dressed girls, while Sophie is thrown into a pool of water. When she gets up and looks around bewildered, a man tries to touch her hair, which causes her to fall back, but she is pushed and turns around to see that it's a wolf guard. And so it is that the two meet again at the school's opening ceremony. Agatha does a backward tilt in her clunky dress, while Sophie wears an ugly black vestment. The two academies spar with each other, and a man leaps down from a great height to spar with the students of the evil academy, one against many. Sophie hears the man next to her introduce him as a prince, and her eyes fill with anticipation. A master comes out from the evil team, and they fight back and forth in a stalemate. The prince is victorious and is about to give a rose to the beautiful sister on his side of the camp, when he turns around and sees the beautiful Sophie, and in a daze throws the flower to Agatha by mistake. Agatha is ostracized by her companions and locked in a room, and Raphael warns Agatha that Sophie is the one he has chosen and to stay away from her. Agatha is especially worried about her best friend and rushes off to find her, and coincidentally runs into a bullied Sophie as well. They make their way to the headmaster's office and see the golden book that would determine their fate. Sophie walks up to try to correct herself, only to be stopped by the divine pen. That's when the principal tells them that getting the prince's true love's kiss will allow them to rewrite their lives. The powerful divine pen reminds them that true love's kisses all come with a prize and will make them old and possibly turn them into objects. Sophie, to prove that she is on the side of good, strongly states that she wants to stay. That day, the academy begins a trial mission, and the tree spirit takes the good group into the forest. The flowers turn into monsters with long teeth. A man runs away in fear and acts the chases after him worriedly. Suddenly electricity flashes black clouds over the man's head, and he fades away as he struggles. And Sophie, here, is a real illustration of how to become a witch.